Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you missed last week's video, I am transforming this small room into a craft room slash storage room. This is how it looked in the beginning and in that last video, I shared the process of how I laid the floor tile. If you missed that last video, I recommend to check that video out before going into this one so you can understand the exact process it took to transform this room. But if you've already seen that video, let me show you the progress I've made. Before I add anything in the room, I need to remove the baseboard. So I'm going to use the painter's tool to try to break the caulk seal. You can also use a utility knife to do this, which I couldn't find at the time. Afterwards, I used my hammer to create a small wedge in between the wall and baseboard. I gently pulled the baseboard away from the wall using the back of the hammer. Well, I definitely didn't mean to tear away some of the drywall. I guess I didn't break the caulk seal well enough. So, lesson learned. Now I have to fix that, but we'll deal with that later. I just continued to pull away the baseboard and it eventually pulled away. I repeated the same process on the second and third wall, except I made sure to break the caulk seal and use a crowbar to pull away the baseboard. Here's how it looks so far. Before I set aside the baseboard, I removed the nails and lightly scraped away the caulk. Now whenever I need the baseboard again, it will be ready to install. Okay guys, I wanted to share this with you. Um, before I did my storage, I kind of drew up some a diagram of the room. I measured the space to make sure you know, you want to make sure you have enough room for the items that you're thinking about putting in there. So I just measured out, you know, the dimensions of the room. And then I looked on Ikea's website. I kind of like did a diagram of what it looked like on one side and then what it would look like on the other side. And of course it did not come out like that, but I made sure the pieces or the bookcases that I wanted that they fit in the space and look in proportion. And it did turn out um, the way I expected. So then I wrote out, you know, the dimensions of each of the bookcases I needed and the price as well as the quantity before I went to the store. So I just wanted to let you guys know kind of how I do some of the things. I just don't go and just look at a space and then just say, oh, it looks like it's gonna fit because you don't know until it actually is in there, but you can get a good idea um, by measuring out your room and making sure that everything that you wanna purchase is in proportion. So that's my recommendation. Just don't go out and buy something and expect it to fit in your room. Measure the room out, then find the products that fit in that space. Okay, so here's the packages with the bookcases I purchased and now it's time to assemble it. Okay, question. Do you like the visual diagram that they provide um, at Ikea. Even if you don't have Ikea, do you like the visual illustration of how to assemble furniture or do you need um, instructions or verbiage so that you'll know how to do it? I'm just curious to know. For me, I love a visual diagram. I can easily see what I'm doing, but when I have to sit there and read, it gets really frustrating for me and I end up having to come back and assemble the furniture later because I just don't have the patience. So guys, right now I am working away assembling the bookcases and I am liking how it is looking. So this is the progress I made in the space. I have 
three bookshelves here or bookcases. I have three bookcases here and then I have one here. I need to purchase another one to go up here like I did in this. This is an extra book uh, sale. I don't know what you call it, but anyway, it's just one section to add to the top. And then I have these here and that's gonna be mounted up to towards the ceiling. So right now it's just on the dresser. And I am waiting for, I'm gonna put contact paper um, on top, something really nice to complement the gray to give it some color in here. So next I am going to secure these bookcases to the wall. I'm going to go to the hardware store and get some wood so we can make it look more custom. And I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Also, I made a big mistake. I ended, I did not really need to remove the baseboard on this wall right here. And I <laughs> messed up the wall. So I'm gonna show you guys how I fixed that. Um, just in case you do the same thing. You know, sometimes projects don't turn out exactly how we intended. You know, I have situations that happen and this is the one for this particular project. Also, um, there are areas where I'm just going to keep this space because I think this will be nice. You know, if I have something long, I can put this in that corner. But if you notice, you know, the baseboard is gone. I'm going to add that back. I'm going to cut the baseboard so that it just goes in this area and not behind the, um, the bookcase. The reason why I removed the baseboard is so that the bookcases can be flush to the wall and you can't do that if you have the baseboard. It's kind of like this, but I think I might keep it this way. I don't know, probably not. I'm going to cut it. So I have to get the tools to do that. And I will update you guys on the progress. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great week. See you next time.